every game that's not Brood War. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> very quick Donor hatch Zero from Dark just here. Just resubscribed for one month. Thank you, Donor Zero. Okay, so right now, uh, Max Pack's coming up with the probe. Uh, that was a very fast hatch first. Like Eric is the one that kind of. Uh, this, I don't think this was exactly the build, was it? It might have been exactly the build. I wasn't paying super close attention. But anyways, uh, these very fast hatches without an overlord uh, to stop the probe from blocking you because the probe blocks you and then they go Adept Oracle and your drones are split and the creep is not connected and it just gets dirty. Dark hates dealing with that shit, so he just makes it right away. X three hundred. What is it, Nambo? L, 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 L. Okay, we're going to pause the donos. We'll play them at the end. Thank you, Nambona. It's fucking very high quality. I can see it typed in chat. I can see that it doesn't change. It's just the same exact awesome L. Now, uh, let's see. What, what are we going to end up seeing? Like, um, I almost feel like I'm more waiting from Dark's side, which normally I wait more from the Protoss' Absolute side. Absolute fire just but, um, subscribed for 10 months. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to pause those as well. Appreciate it though. Now, uh, with Dark, I feel like there's a decent chance he'll do something kind of aggressive in the mid game. Max Pax is very good at keeping blink pressure on. Very, very, very good at it. Uh, so I'm not sure that you want to go into that against him. You might want to try to bring the game in a different direction with some sort of like quicker attack. You have to wait a little bit, of course. That third hatch should be going up relatively soon here, I'd say. Yeah, there goes the drone right now. Ling just scouting around to see if anything cheesy is happening, but it's not. It looks like it's probably just going to be Adept Oracle as is the norm. And FYI, Bion awaits in the finals. This is the other semifinals. Pretty good tournament this week, actually. Feels a little bit fast as well. I guess we'll see how long this series takes, but um, it does feel a bit quicker than it normally is. Now, I imagine we're just going to see like three oracles in a row, but maybe we could see something fun like a void ray. I don't think we'll see any sort of like quick sky toss. Like obviously late game can just go to sky toss naturally, but... Max Pax is generally not the guy that goes, you know what, let's make Void Rays and just make this into a carrier game. You know, he's so good with that multitasking, with that micro, with that pressure of the stalkers. So that's what I want to see from him. Third Nexus going up. chase this uh, overload away. Three more queens popping out here for uh, Dark. And let's see if we have that Twilight pop down now. I'd be pretty surprised if we don't. Double gasage. A lot of overlords coming up. What is this? A laser? 58 of 58. What is this? Artosis? Uh, so pretty big supply block there, but he's fixing it with mass overlord. Double Oracle flying in. Twilight Forge on the way. Certainly blink. I would uh, imagine will follow. Really heavy drone production here from Dark. You can see Max Pack still up in workers here as we reach 50. Pretty impressive. Keeping just a little bit of pressure on with these oracles. Dark with good zoning, though. <coughs> Couple tags going down. Four depths coming in. This is the this is the moment where Max Packs may be able to get good damage. There's not a lot of units, right? There's like six lings and then queens. So there is a possibility you find a place for the adepts to do something. He is making a few more lings to make sure that that's going to be a lot harder.
Nice flank. Very nicely done there by Dark. And Max Pax does get two of them out. So even though he's going to end up losing all of his adepts, three drones, four drones, and that's going to be it. Uh, does a reasonable job trading them out, considering the nice catch there by Dark. So Blink is coming up. Robo, more gates. That plus one, of course. Oh, Hydralisk Den as well as Roach Speed. Okay, so what we might end up seeing here is a Roach Hydra call. Uh, you know, we see a lot of people go like Roach Ravager, Ling, Queen, and try to hold on against Blink, and it just doesn't seem to work very well. Now, you know, when I think of like Roach Hydra, I think of Sue, right? Like he, he loves just fucking basic units with no abilities. But it makes sense in a lot of ways, right? The roaches tank reasonably well, deal damage reasonably well. And if you have a row of hydras behind them with their upgrades, like they deal a lot of damage very, very quickly. So yeah, I'm excited about this. Uh, we have a storm on the way, as well as that fourth nexus about halfway done. This is gonna be a fun one. Hmm. I'm really interested in the, the Hydra because he hasn't made Roaches yet, and I thought he was going to go into Roach. He is getting that Roach speed, but he's just on Hydra. Now, Hydra Ling was a comp against Blink meta back... At, it was at the end of Heart of the Swarm, if you guys recall. So basically, towards the end of Heart of the Swarm, they nerfed uh, Swarm hosts like really, really heavily, and the meta turned into Ling Hydra against Blink Stalkers. This was during the time when Snoop was really peaking, if you guys recall. He was like the only foreigner that could really compete. And uh, he was particularly good at that, actually. I remember a lot of his games from that era. But yeah, that was a thing for a bit. So I was wondering if, if we're going to see that attempted again, but it doesn't look like it. A bunch of roaches get made suddenly. So it is going to be the Roach Hydra that I was thinking about before. And that's like... There's a lot of health and a lot of damage in that comp, but Max Pax already has Storm. So if he gets some good high quality Storms down, that's like, that becomes scary very quickly. Now notice the Ling's coming up to scout. He is afraid of these uh, Stasis Wards. Ooh, not a bad Stasis Ward actually, uh, but the Stasis Wards can ruin a comp like this too. See, he's having a hard time even getting around the Frozen Lings. It's kind of wild what that can do. But it looks like he just has plenty. Like, I'm not afraid at all here for Max Pax. Not at all. Oh, no charge yet, actually. Counterattack does go down into this fourth base area. He's cleaned everything very well so far. Uh, we actually don't really have probe death yet, but we're really close to a bunch. Yeah, see, he's starting to attack into the probes now after killing all the static D. All right, some good storms go down. He's only lost eight probes. Max Pax's army looks pretty darn good right now. Even has an immortal out there. Nice, nice. Throws the storms down. He's going to eliminate everything that was at his fourth. And don't forget, Dark is only on four bases now with 69 drones. Nice. Another immortal coming out. Still more probes for Max Pax. Ooh, that, was, that was a misclick for sure. GG. Max Pax holds. Kind of an all-in there from Dark. It was interesting to see because we haven't seen that comp used by a top-end player against another top-end player very often in a long time. The last time I remember seeing someone try this like really heavy Roach Hydra at the top level, they, there has to have been a time since then. The last time I'm thinking of it was the Sue Stats Finals at Katowice many, many, many years ago. I can't even remember what year that was. But I feel like the, the meta, like, it never really became meta. He didn't even, it didn't feel that good when he was doing it back then, even. Hmm. Cool, though. We'll get in the next game here in a second.
2019, is that when it was? Four, four years? Yeah, that makes sense. You're right, because it was before the pandemic, so... Wait, no. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic, is that right? No, no, no. Was it? No, no, I don't think it was 2019, was it? 2018, maybe? Are you sure it wasn't 2018? I'm not good with dates. I don't know why I'm trying to argue this. The stats for Sue finally at Katowice. Unpause TTS. Oh, we're starting the game. I'll unpause it after. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. We're going into, uh, <coughs> excuse me, game number two. Max Packs leads one to zero. It's a best of three. Winner goes to the finals. All right, here we go. We have uh, the bottom right dark, and in the top left we have max packs. Hmm. So, let's see if dark goes for that super fast hatch once again. Has to be a bit unhappy with that game. Setting his drone down. Yep, he's going for it, so he should be able to get that up just before max packs gets there. All right, a little bit of harassment on the mineral patches. What would happen if you put a StarCraft 2 probe into StarCraft 1? I think that's all you need to do to get Protoss to start winning tournaments. Just a StarCraft 1 probe comes in. And you just fucking sit behind the mineral patches and kill drones. Chase shit down. Your opponent can't scout. You go after Marines and Reapers and shit. I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> so we'll wait a little bit here and, and see what they want to open up with. I'd imagine it's going to be the same thing. Probes in StarCraft 1 bring back 8 minerals, bro. But I'm talking about how much... Oh, dude. Pro Brood War Probe is insane. It's a, one of the best units in the whole game. So. Mm, should be seeing that third uh, hatch come up relatively soon. Stargate coming up for... For max packs. Stalker on the way. Help push back in that Overlord when the uh, Oracle comes out. It's one way to be able to tell that it'll be Oracle first. It's 
So Oracle coming. Gonna start pushing that uh, Overlord away. Speed on the way as well as that third hatch. Third next is super fast. It's like exactly the same game as before. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Make him work for it. Get that fucking Ovi out of here. <laughs> it doesn't get it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, so yeah, it's 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 very close to a copy of the last game. Now, uh, as far as Dark goes, yeah, he's taking a little bit of damage here, a little bit of sloppiness with that drone rally. Uh, there comes his lair. I do want to see if he wants to try that same thing again, right? The Roach Warren as well as the um, Hydralisk Den. Oh, Max Pack switching it up. Got stuck there for a moment, so it did cancel out, but he is going for a charge build. Still making probes, okay? For two base, like you, I mean, he's he's still making probes, right? So this is charge, but it's not like an all-in or something like that. I mean, it, things can end up where you end up dying for doing something like this. It is, it is a bit risky. High risk, high reward. So, Baneling Nest, yeah. Okay, so this this makes sense. A very different approach here from Dark, right? Roach Speed, getting Baneling Nest, getting plus one melee. It's going to be like a Ling Bane Roach Ravager, probably. Uh, this type of build, he might actually do like the very aggressive version where you walk across the map and just kill one of your opponent's bases right away. And that being said, a lot of Zealots are coming across the map right now. Charge is about to finish. Plus one's almost done. The Baneling Nest plus Roach combo is going to be very, very good against this. Just has to buy a little bit of time here. I think he's going to be completely fine. Now, what is the Max Pack's follow-up going to look like? See, this is not working out for him. I love the Cocoon Morphs there. The Ravager Morphs, right? Very, very good. Catching a lot of these. Okay, Max Pack's trying to cancel a hatch. Not even going to get that. Not even going to get that. Now, he is making an Immortal at home. I think he should pop a Void Ray. I feel like a Void Ray would probably be a smart move here as well. I feel like you need a little bit more to secure because... There's no way Dark's not counterattacking. And if he just makes a handful of Banelings with these Roaches, the entirety of your army can't do anything. It's like the Immortal is the only thing that has a chance, and there's one of them. Maybe you bring the three Oracles back. Yeah, that helps. But yeah, just a few Banelings mixed in with these Roaches, and the charge lots aren't going to do it. All right, sacks the Ravager. Little counterattack here. I like that very much. We have a couple Banelings in here. Few, four, four behind. Needs to bring those up to the Zealots. Yeah, see, this is, uh, that's rough. Ooh, a lot of damage onto the Zealots. Yeah, as you can see, he's like trying to detonate them without taking too much damage, but it's tough. It's very tough. You see a lot of probes dying here. Oh, yes. The infamous High Templar uh, auto attack. I love it. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking pretty grim. I think we're going to be going to a game number three. All right, recalls into the natural. The one thing, like, Dark is not super high on drones. Oh, I love the Spire. The Spire is beautiful. The Spire is going to give him, like, a lot of possibilities, a lot of options here. Now, Archons are being morphed. He's getting a Prism. He has plus two on the way. If he can control this just right, like if he holds this first off, which 
I don't know, man. That's a lot of roaches targeting down these these uh, archons. The thing is, the archons, like, if he... Right, he had those kind of stuck in the front. He had to stand there. Dark was able to trade. But if he brought out five archons, six archons, a couple of mortals, charge lots, you know, a prism, and does an attack, that's actually... That's pretty darn scary. That's pretty darn scary. So that was a very good move, reducing that count. Got rid of an immortal, got rid of three archons. Uh, trading with some Ling Ravager Roach. So that's that's awesome. By Dark there. This is like Max Pax is pretty much all in. You can see him making a Nexus, but that's a very fringe case where the Nexus matters. Like if he goes across the map, attacks heavily, let's say he kills a base but loses part of his army and can't quite kill Dark then maybe that third nexus is something that ends up helping out so like he sees that there there could be a way that that helps but like realistically that like i don't think he's gonna be able to kill him here there's 11 mutas on the way by the way so if he just targets the archons he's gonna be able to take this the archons are actually doing fantastically in here mutas fly over so he sees that there are mutas Yeah, trying to keep that prism alive. Can't quite do it, unfortunately. The Muta's being kind of wrecked by the Archons, as you can see. But just not quite enough units. What a wild game, man. Good effort here by Max Pax. Such a tough position. Ah! <laughs> oh, if only he could save that. Yeah, so now we're on, like, Roach Ravager, which can, over time, grind down comps like this. More uh, Mutas on the way, which I think is a good choice once again, even though Archons kind of destroy them. You know, you can do things like just counterattacking the main into the natural, fly around the Archons, pick off Warp Prisms, that type of thing. This is the type of flexibility that I really love from the Spire play. I think a lot of times when shit goes weird in this matchup, a Spire is just an awesome call. There's just so much tactically you can do with the mutas. Yeah, look at this muta attacking to the natural. Like, Max Pax just, his economy is going to be shredded. Um, there is going to be a counterattack. Like, he shouldn't leave yet. He should do this one more attack. Uh, he has a prism. I'm not sure exactly where it's at, but I think it's actually with his army. Like, kind of trailing behind it a little bit. This is a big moment. Like, if he could actually break this, who knows? Uh, the mutas are doing so much work, though. So much work. Archons as well. Dude, look at this. He's getting rid of the queens. If only he had a big warp in round here. <laughs> if only he had 12 zealots right now. Yeah, it seems like uh, everything is starting to die, unfortunately. Okay, that was a swift pickup. Dude, Max Pax really is so good. <laughs> GG. Dark gonna end up taking it. Well done. Very well done. What? Clever Starcraft Gar cheered. X300, RT, I want to say something to the fellow Starcraft 2 fans, but I am not sure I am allowed to say okay. it, RT. All right, RT, yeah. I will say it. Okay. Come in my ass. <laughs> Fuck you. Dead guy in the chat donated three dollars. Hey, Artie, love the casts. Not to be toxic, but I saw another caster's video recently, and goddamn, do they even play the game? If you ever quit casting, I guess I'll have to learn Korean, bro. It sucks. Oh yeah, something, something. Mario Septic Tank. Well, I do appreciate <clears throat> the kind words. Uh, I mean, I've dedicated my life for like twenty-five years to this shit, so. I'm glad that you're impressed with my knowledge. <laughs> uh, I will continue. I mean, I'm 40. I have four kids and a wife. I live in a house in the suburbs, right? I don't know if you call it suburbs. It's pretty rural. So I live I live in a rural house. I have quick internet. I'm going to do this for the rest of my fucking life. It has been so it is decided or whatever the fuck that ugly guy from the Star Wars show says. And so it is decided.
All right, here we go, guys. I just got faster and again. I'm s I can't get used to the new stream. Here we go. Game three. So we have in the top left dark and in the bottom right, we have max packs. Hard lead going to be our uh, map. Never know how to say this, this uh, map. Is it hard lead or is it haired lead? Never know. All right, Dark trying to get... Well, no, actually, that was a little bit of a fake. He, he didn't go for that same quick build again. I think he maybe thought that he could get Max Packs to uh, not come across the map again at the exact same time, but Max Packs a little bit robotic in that. So ends up taking that hatch. We might be seeing offensive hatch as well. This is a pretty common counter by Dark. Now, Max Packs will probably send four probes, but he might send five. We'll see. Second gate. Severn X core. Of course, the uh, Zealot coming out first. Very standard stuff. So four probes plus that Zealot going to town. Overlord just flying right over, giving him a crotch shot. Spawning pool almost done here. Now, here's the real counterplay that you get. Uh, is the couple of adepts that you chrono boost out, right? This is generally what you like really always see uh, when it is offensive hatch is like, the Zealot into double Adept, and the Adepts can go across the map because speed won't be fast. Adepts coming up. Plenty of Lings being made. Look at that. That's a lot of Lings, man. His drone count is not going to be nearly as high as what he wanted. Look at this. He's already got eight, and he's making eight more. That's like at least more than 14 lings. Uh, that's just like a lot, man. Is he just going to counterattack? Is that the plan? Or is he... Like, you don't make this many lings against two adepts, right? All right, he surrounds the Zealot and gets it really fast. Oh, this is dirty, man. Max Pack's getting good value. The fact that you force 16 lings here and get four drones. Really high quality for Max Packs. Oh! Get wrecked! The real go is Max Packs! All right, so third next, or the, rather, sorry, natural nexus, finishing up here. Oracle about halfway done. I think this will just go into a pretty regular game for Max Pax. On dark side, I feel like dark is a little bit behind here. And I want to see him do something to try to catch up, and I'm not sure what that is that I want to see. Like, 
Dude, it's hard to do a quick attack. The Roachling I liked before. Okay, he's making a lot of lings. But then he makes another drone. Another couple drones. I think he's just nervous about the Adepts. Now, see, this is why this is such good play from Max Packs. If you see a Zerg player, Zerg players don't like... Like, if you're wondering about how to play against Zerg, right? A big percentage of playing against Zerg is forcing them to make what they don't want to make at the wrong times, right? So, like, for instance, what Dark wants to do is make drones. So when you see him do something like he's making three drones, and then you show him Adepts, and then he's making ten links, and then he's making three drones. That's the type of shit that kills Zerg over time. Is, you know, you want to do, like, drones as hard as you can into just enough units to hold, right? That's... Well, not necessarily just enough to hold. Sometimes you want an overwhelming mass, right? There's different situations with that. But, like, you want to get all your drones out as quickly as possible. So if you do, like, 3-10-3, three, three, that is the type of thing where it's like, yes, this is why you're pressuring. This is why you're walking on the map or pretending to walk on the map. Because Zerg has to react to those things. Very nice. Clearing a lot of lings here. Bailing nest on the way. So plenty of lings being made still. <laughs> Bailing nest is almost done. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like a weird looking game for Dark. Look at his, his drone count, man. 45. And he's just got tons of lings. Max packs on three base. Still has oracles floating about. It looks pretty bad, but... Ugh. Like the surface area and everything is super, super bad. I guess you just do a big ling ban all in. That's the only thing I can think of. But it really right now looks to me like it's going to be uh, beyond Max Packs Finals. Oof. Great surround. Great surround of the uh, Stalkers. Like, uh, okay, a recall comes down, and he does bring the, uh, the Banelings down. Hold on. Let's see. Hey. Hey. Pretty good. Is Dark going to be able to actually overrun everything, though? Right? The uh, Oracles are running out of energy. He warped in a few Zealots there. Now, the thing is, if you stand Stalkers in a wall, it's really hard to bust that with Banes. They're both in the mid-40s of workers. That's like 45 is like two base saturation. Think of it that way, right? So Dark has four hatch, but he's got two base saturation, same as Max Pack. So they're mining very similar amounts. And it's not like StarCraft 1. The extra mineral patches don't help as much. Uh, you know, because workers double up almost perfectly in StarCraft 2, right? So, uh, you know, right now, economy-wise, Max Pax is not completely dead. He's about to have plus one. He's about to have blink. Can he hit critical mass here? I think he can. I think he can. I still think that Dark is in terrible trouble. You know, you still have to be careful. He has more oracles. Remember when Hero came out with the heavy blink play and he would just like, if you're making this many lings, he would actually have like eight oracles right now. I did like that. I like that little phase of uh, PBZ. But yeah, the fourth oracle, definitely a good a good add. Dark is picking off some ling, or some uh, probes rather with his lings. <coughs> 26 more lings on the way. He has droned up his other bases some, making another hatch as well. I like his hatch is all going on location. Because he's having to produce so many lings here that he does need the hatches. So whether he has drones for those bases or not, you know, maybe he can slip them in later on. Really like it, though. I, I like Dark is playing by the seat of his pants this entire time. It is very impressive what he's doing. Like he's doing a good job. Uh, that was a mistake. Looks like he got aggroed towards the wall or maybe even a misclick. But should have been able to kill a couple of probes there. Okay, Baneling's coming in for a sneaky flank. Yeah, they don't quite get it. Oracle's still charging up. It's 
So, plus one uh, carapace, almost done here on these lings. Plus two melee, about a third of the way. More and more lings being made. Dark has wiggled his way up to 71 drones. Has the infestation pit. Going for the hive. It's an impressive game. If he gets to hive and gets an ultralist cavern, like this is clearly an ultralist game, by the way, in case you guys were wondering, this pure ling shit going into ultra here. Normally that's a strat that you'll see reserved for a Zerg versus uh, Terran, but he's playing against mass blink stalker that's going into Colossus to counter the lings. So like the two things that he can go for against this are ultras and banelings with speed. The banelings with speed, you know, you can blink away from once, but your army is super clump, so the banelings can do a very good job there. And ultras, like, obviously, can be very good against both stalkers and, and colossi that are standing on top of them. So, dude, I want to see him get into the ultra cavern because you just never see that in this matchup. It's just so rare to get into a position where that makes sense. All right, plus two melee is almost done. The hive is almost done, more importantly. He keeps threatening counters, but... We're going to have a move out before he has Ultras, if he goes Ultras Cavern, I believe. I think we'll have a Max Packs move out relatively soon here. Like, he's actually getting up to a good enough army that he kind of has critical mass against Lings. Okay, Adrenal. Ultra Cavern! Fuck yeah! My brain just jumped over to Beavis and Butthead. Their little break in the law song. It's like, yeah, dude. Ultras and ZBP, let's go. Love to see it. Love to see it. Tons of Lings ridiculous swarm of lings going around oh my god stasis ward is so broken it's insane dude that stasis ward is unreal <laughs> it like made a protective shield around the stalkers it's so crazy it's so crazy anyways this is really sad because like i said right the attack is gonna hit right before the ultras gg that was super cool from dark Hats off to Dark for that. That was, um, you never see that work. You never see it even attempted. But it all made sense logically what he was doing. Uh, and if he had been able to get to Ultras and he had gotten Ultra Speed and Chitinous, he'll, he'll wipe him, but he just can't quite get there.